So the next speaker is uh, Rafael Silva Rocha uh, from Portugal, and he's going to talk about refactoring the pseudomonas tool. It's a mistake. Okay, so it's from Spain, not Portugal. All right. Uh, so, okay. So the the talk is about refactoring the pseudomonas tool transcriptional circuit. Perfect. I will talk from here because I don't like to be behind this thing. Uh, so, good afternoon, everybody. So, my name is Rafael Silva Rocha. I'm working in Madrid. Let me step here. Uh, in the July, and I'm working in the Bethel Lorenzo lab. Yeah, I'd like to talk about my some work I'm performing in my PhD in Madrid. So, I will, I will talk about the refractory pseudomonas total transcriptional circuit. So. Uh, for the further application of synthetic biology, we are very interested in, in this circuit. And we've, uh, fourth, uh, we'd like to, to make a refactor in the circuit to get a more easy and available circuit for following application. So let me start. So in, in our lab, we are working on the environmental microbiology and all focusing on bioremediation, biodegradation. So we don't work, uh, we don't like to work too much with E. coli. We prefer uh, work with another strain, the Pseudomonas putida MT2, which is able to grow, use aromatic compounds as uh, only carbon source. So this strain has a plasmid, and this plasmid is called a pathway to degradate toluene and, and, and the aromatic compounds related. So, we like to work in this kind of site, in polluted site. We don't like to, we don't like to work uh, this kind, uh, other kind of bacteria like E. coli. So, if you go to, to uh, a site with pollution, we will find a very uh, uh, great diversity in, the, in this community. And then, if you go there and try to isolate some organism that could grow in, in this condition, we, we can find the situation where a bacteria can grow using a pollutant as carbon source, not glucose, not another thing, just a pollutant. So it has a very uh, interesting application for bioremediation, and we are interested in studying how the bacteria perform this function and how the bacteria regulate this, the expression of the genes for biodegradation. So that's no, this is now our model organism. The P. Putin. and uh, here we have the pathway for toluene biodegradation. So uh, it has two path, two operons. The upper operon encodes the pathway for the fourth step of biodegradation, and then the meta operon encodes the second step that produces the intermediate to the TCA cycle, and its operon have. Uh, uh, promoting, and in, in the same plasma defines the two regulators responsible for the control and expression of the entire the, the two pathways. So, apparently, it looks very uh, easy because we have the, the enzyme here and the degradation of the of the compounds. But in fact, we have a very interesting uh, regulatory circuit because we have both. We use four different sigma. Um, Vectors. We have AHF uh, uh, necessity for expression, expression in PU. These uh, regulators uh, interact with each other, and then we have this kind of uh, uh, this compression. For example, in PM promoting, we have three. This promoter can use three different sigma factors for get activity. So, uh, in order to use this system and prove the efficiency of the system, we, we want to refactor this circuit, the genetic circuit, um, for improvement of the, of the degradation. So the first pass, uh, we try to, do, to create a people to the variant uh, more useful for laboratory applications. And the main problem is that this, uh, this strain uh, is fluorescent when you, it grows on minimal mind. So I can use, as can you see here, it's a little complicated work with GFP on this bacterium because we cannot differentiate uh, a bacteria with and without GFP. So for this, 
we create uh, a library of random mutants in this bacterium and, and get some mutants that do not produce uh, fluorescence on minimum mind you. And then we use a system described in this paper to, to remove the canamides resistance and then get, uh, have a bacterium with that resistance so we can use again the canamides uh, for genetic manipulation of these organ organisms. So here's the comparison. The white type stain grow in LB, and then when, when we grow this bacteria in minimal module, we can see the high fluorescence in this. But then in the mutants, um, after and before the, the, the removal of canamycin, the bacteria lost the fluorescence completely. So that's, uh, now we have a, a chassis to work using fluorescence in this, uh, for the organisms. Okay, in the second part, I'd like to talk about the standardization from, of promoters because uh, everybody knows about the BioBrick bio -brick and kits for standardization. But for example, they're using plasma that they only replic uh, replicate uh, in E. coli. And we'd like to do the same for putrid. So we, are create, we create the, the tools to do this kind of experiments. So these are, these are the, the objectives for this part of the work. Create a system for promoting quantification. This system should work in monocop to avoid some oscillation in plasmid cop number, for example. And it should be able to allow high drug pool uh, screening. For this, we create this plasmid, the PRV1, which have the uh, uh, GFP variant is not an unstable variant, before someone uh, asking me. And this system is replicating E. coli, have a origin for transference for P. putida using um, conjugation. And it uh, can just be, can you just replicate it in an E. coli which encodes a tRNA, a suppressed tRNA, because we have a, a amber codon in the like C and in the resistance gene. So just in this bacteria, you, you can uh, maintain this plasma. So uh, what we do is clone the promoter using these sites. And then when you induce the promoter, you have the production of both GFP and LACC in this bacteria. So we can see this, in, uh, you can see it in this quantification. Uh, it's in E. coli, uh, so in multicop. And some of the promoters that we have cloned until now, we are just starting to quantify, to validate the system. We can see this promoter is uh, constitutive, and they all need the, the regulator, the activator, to work, for example, VS and PM. And the same profiling, qualitatively, can, can be seen using like C. So it's a BC-strong reporter system. Then, uh, after cloning the promoter, you have to put it in the chromosome. So if you want to compare promoters in the chromosome, it's, uh, it's a better idea to put in a, in a single site because you have uh, all the, the same, uh, different promoters in the same site of the chromosome. So for this, we use uh, an, uh, another transposome to put in the chromosome of P. putida a uh, homologous fragment. What is this? This fragment has the like C gene without promoting, so the cell is white, and a uh, streptomycin resistant gene disrupted by canamycin. So cells is canamycin resistant and streptomycin sensitive. And once we have this chassis ready for, for, what, uh, for do the quantification, we can now uh, perform the experiments. I will not show the, 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 uh, the comparison results in chromosome because we are just starting to, to, do, this, to do this experiment. But how the system works, so you pass the, your plasma from Nikolai to P. putida using uh, a triparental matting, so we perform a conjugation. And then as this plasma has just uh, already for replication in Nikolai, it has to suicide. I mean, it will recombinate in the chromosome with the previous um, fragment that we placed um, before, we put before in the chromosome. 
and then you just have to select for uh, streptomycin sensitive and for colon that are blue. So also you can uh, confirm this in session by analyzing the sensibility to canamycin. So in this way, we have your desired promoter inserted in the chromosome, in monocop, in a specific position that you can, so all the promoters you want to compare, it will be in the same background, in the same, uh, in the same condition, in the conditions. So we, we expect that it will be more, um, it will be a best system for working in, in this organism. And the third part is, in fact, uh, that's your, uh, these two, two forces just for get more tools for working in this organism. And the third one, we start with the refactoring of the entire circuit. And the, we want to refactor this circuit for get out optimizer, regulatory circuit. We design a modular sequence to, to easily inter, uh, exchange the parts, the distinct parts in the, in the circuit. We made some compression. I'll explain it uh, uh, in a few moments. And you create a system for quantifying the, to analyze the, the performance of the system. Uh, once again, if we compare the, the, the white type, the natural plasmid, we have the regulators here with the, uh, its promoters, and then the most impor important promoters far away, many kilobase far away from this. So if you want to make some manipulation in, in this bacterium, we have dif difficult because we have to address, uh, we have to target uh, different place in this plasmid. So uh, what we've done, we compress all the regulatory elements in the, sa in the same piece of, the, of DNA. So we, ha we have, for example, uh, cell S, which activate PM in the same piece, and cell R, which activate PO in another piece. Then we, we also optimize the ribosome binding site for, for these regulators. We put, of course, um, transcriptional terminator, terminators for avoiding any transcription to pass for the other promoter. Here we have uh, the other promoters for regulation of this, this gene for this one. And we made a cleanup in, in the resistance site useful for genetic manipulation, for uh, you know, molecular biology of this, of this piece. And we put in another site for easily exchange uh, each part uh, in a more easy way. It's, it's uh, the same idea of the Drew Andy paper uh, using the T7 genome, so, but in the smaller scale. So we, we send it to GNR to synthesize the, the entire sequence, and then we assemble it in a, in a 4 KB, KB sequence. And now we can, uh, using this unique, unique resistance site, uh, exchange the part for uh, another one, or make the rectal evolution, and then put it in this, put it back in, in, the, in, the new, uh, in the new circuit. And for example, for cell R, we, we have a protein with a, 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 modular, uh, a modular design. So this protein has three domains, the inducing binding, the multimerization domain, and the DNA binding domain. So we introduce this uh, unique site so we can make a, a library uh, of variants for the uh, DNA, uh, DNA by domain, and clone it again in the circuit. So we can now make a screening for new variants in, in, re in the recognition site, in recognition of the DNA. Also, we can exchange the, the, in, the inducing bind domain to allow this protein to recognize another factor. Like, for example, uh, there is a, some reports in the literature of uh, variants which can recognize TNT uh, as an inducer. So in, 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 in this design, we can easily replace each part. And for validating the system, we created this, this other uh, plasmid, which have the GFP for one side and the MHR for the other side. And then we can clone the entire circuit 
and validate if the city works or not. I hope it's work because my thesis depends on this. And uh, we are now, we have uh, right now this piece of assembler, and we are cloning in, in, in this vector to make the, the quantification and, and see if the system, after the optimization, and after, yeah, we made uh, also uh, a small code of optimization for people to them. In the site that we, 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 we clean up, the resistance site that we have clean up. And then we have to see first if it can work or not. So we are in this part right now. And for the directed, directed evolution, we create another plasmid, a small one, to put the entire system and use this unique uh, resistance site, replace all the uh, other parts. For example, for cell R, we are uh, we we will clone some variants from these two papers to change exchange, uh, change the inducer profile of the protein. So, in conclusion, we have this new system for um, both multicop and monocop promoted comparison in in multicop for E. coli and, and monocop for P. putinum. A new system for probe divergence promoters, because in this case we have one promote for each side. And uh, we have also the modular design of the refactorized top circuit, which we allow uh, directed evolution of each part. And the next step, we are in work now in the validation of the top circuit, the refactorized one, in the direct evolution of the parts of exchanging the, each one, and in the reconstruction of the entire metabolic using now this new circuit uh, for Putin. So, I'd like to say thanks for people from the laboratory. And uh, hear my voice if you want to know who he is. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you. So the floor is open. Any questions on the floor? There's a question back. Um, did I stand, understand right that uh, for Putida you just have your promoter in the chromosome or your whole construct? That's why you just have a one copy yeah. thing. Are there no expression vectors self-replicating in Putida? Or do you don't like to do that? Another system? Oh, sorry. If there's a self-replicating expression vector for Putida, what you could use to do yeah. the same what you do in E. coli. Yeah, yeah. There is, there is a lot of, but in this case we prefer to work in monocop than in multicop. Okay, just because in the end you put this in, a, in the the original plan is one cop by for cell, so we, we don't we don't want to put another variant in this uh, and in the time to understand how the system works in detail. So the idea is make the system more similar to the original one. So installing in monocop, we think it could be a good idea, and um, you know avoid this kind of fluctuation in the plan in the cop number. And yeah, okay. A follow-up question about that. Uh, it, in fact, for the whole circuit, once you have constructed, uh, it doesn't need to be a, a single copy. You can still test it whether it works or not, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, in this case, for, for the circuit, we will first validate in, in E. coli, in, in multicop, because it is easy. We can just clone this promote in this vector and quantify the, the activity of the two promoters. But then, once we have one functional, we all start for putting the, making the, in the engineering in Putida, in monocrop. But what I'm saying is that in uh, Putida, if you use multi-copy, you can still use it to test. In, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes. You, you try to refactor in the you know, circuit, so you synthesize the whole circuit and then you try, you test it in the E. coli, and then you want to lock out the whole circuit in the pseudomonas. They replace your, or use a new synthetic circuit you put in, in your pseudomonas, well, which is, have been, has, has been, you know, the TL, TL circuit has been locked out. Is that right? Uh, yeah, because the, this strain, the strain that we use is a, is a variant which was cured from the plasmid. So it has just the normal, uh, have the same chromosome, but have, have no the plasmid, no have the plasmid, the, the tau plasmid. 
so you don't have to do the knockout in, in fact. We just have recreate in this train. Yeah. Because uh, in the original one we have is is the MT2, but we work with this one, which don't have a plasma. So. Yeah. 